big is this organization at this point since you started three weeks ago? Well, I mean, there are 632 solidarity protests across the country. I don't know if you directly relate them to our organization, but that's pretty big. There's usually about 2,000 people in the square at any given time now, sometimes around 2,500. Uh, the marches just keep getting bigger. Our biggest march ever was the Union March, the first march we did yesterday. Um, yeah, lots and lots of people. Not as many new faces as I used to see. I've been working the general information table for 16 hours a day for the last 17 days. Uh, not as many new faces as I used to see, but the people that are here are here for the duration. And we do get a lot of people just coming in from all over the country now. Uh, we've heard a lot of um, cases where there has been people being arrested. How are you dealing with that? How are you getting people out of jail? We have swarms and swarms of lawyers. We have the National Lawyers Guild working for us. They get anybody out of jail. Um, and because we're a peaceful protest, it's usually not very hard. The only reason the cops are arresting us is for basic crowd control purposes. And the last question I have for you is, is the most obvious question, but you know, I guess uh, that that will actually open up the way to say whatever you want to say. All right, all right, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, what's yeah. the what is the ultimate goal after this? The ultimate goal, uh, it's the same as it's been since day one. Reform the the banking and finance sectors and uh, get campaign finance reform in, instated. Uh, we might have now that we have 632 branch occupations. Uh, we could very easily picket Bank of Americas across the country for a day. That would be a huge hit. Any message? Things like that. And it we can take more direct and effective action now. So this is going to start getting... I mean, Sorry. we're going to start seeing a lot more tactical things happening instead of just symbolic things. I'm sure you've heard that J.P. Morgan Chase donated $4.6 million to the NYPD. I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of donations are coming into that. And any message for the folks in Washington and Boston in other Occupy movements around the country? Uh, try not to smoke too much. Um, my, my voice is, is going. But uh, other, Oh yeah, and also keep up the struggle. Keep up the struggle. <laughs> you know, uh, we, we love you guys. Without you guys, this couldn't really do what it has to do. I also believe in peace, and 
I really disagree with 66% of all federal taxes going towards militarism. I really believe that there are other ways to solve problems outside of militarism. With all that money we spend on war, we can solve all our problems and all the world's problems. There are nothing but solutions. And the only block to all these solutions is the fact that people haven't been in the streets. Now people are out in the streets, and that's unstoppable. That is the tipping point. That's something that government can't handle and that people in power can't handle. So I'm here, showing up with my body, because I really know how change happens, and it's when all of us show up. One question. If you had the opportunity to talk to a corporate, to a CEO, even a, law, a lawmaker in Washington, what would you tell them? I would say that capitalism at its flaw has a deep fundamental value. Money and valuing only money is too one-dimensional. You can't raise a society on pure capitalism. So this is a cultural war and I would like everyone who's in power to really think outside of the fact that money will solve all problems. And, um, I don't know. Let me think about how I would end that sentence to that person. That we all grow up as children learning lessons about how to love each other and take care of each other. There's plenty to go around and we can value people as well as progress, even financial progress. And I'd like more partnership in that. That's it.